Okay, good morning everyone. We are on Lamed Ahmed Aleph. Yep. Talking about Tuma and Tara. Always fun. I think I'm going to start planning my vacation around uh, when the uh, Dafyomi is up to Tuma and Tara. Unfortunately, I, get, I had asked uh, last minute, so I don't, uh, I don't get to plan in advance. But uh, Amaravasi. Amarav. Amri la Amaraba Baran Isi Amarav. Lamed Amen Aleph. Fifth line. Can you shut the door, please? That would be great. Thank you. So Ravasi says in the name of Rav, and some say Rabba Ben Isi says in the name of Rav. You have Rameyer, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yoshua, Rabbi Elazar, Rabbi Eliezer, Kulu, Svira Lehu, Dein Sheni, Ose, Shlishi, Bechulim. So we have an argument today. We know that we have a Sheret, you have an Avatuma. That makes somebody a person or an object of Rishon on the Tuma. Chulin and Maiser Sheni can become a Sheni Latuma. Truma can become a Shlishi Latuma. And Kodesh can become a Revi Latuma. That's the way we accept it. However, the discussion today is going to be whether Chulin can actually become a Shlishi Latuma. We hold that Chulin only becomes a Sheni Latuma, just like Maiser Sheni. But there is going to be an opinion that Chulin becomes a Shlishi Latuma. So the question over here is whether Chulin becomes a Sheni or a Shlishi. So according to all of these people, Ein sheni ose shlishi b'chulin. That means that chulin cannot become a shlishi, which is the way that we hold, and that's why you have the aleph there with the Rambam. Why is it not brought down in the Shulchan Aruch? Because the Shulchan Aruch is not talking about tumentara. So the Rambam says that a sheni, the way we paskin, that chulin can become a sheni, but not a shlishi. And where do we have a proof? So we're going to bring proofs for all five of these opinions to show that all five of them hold that chulin cannot become a shlishi. Rabbi Meir did not Rabbi Meir because it says in the Mishnah. Kol haton bias mayim midivre sofrim, anything that requires the mikvah midirabanan. That means anything, as Rashi says, that's tahor midiraisa. And the rabbanan say it needs to be brought to a mikvah midirabanan. And he gives an example of yadayim, yadayim shei tzvichum tefila, yadayim that have to be washed. So all of those, says Rashi, the Gemara is saying, all of those are considered to be Shani Latuma. So you have hands that are Shani Latuma. So Shani Latuma is Mitame Es HaKodesh, Uposel Es HaTruma, Umutter Bechulun of Emaisa de Rabbi Meir. So there you go, Rabbi Meir, right off the bat, very easy. You see that if you have a Shani Latuma, Mutter Bechulun of Emaisa, if you touch Chulun, which is what we want to concentrate on, if you touch Chulun or Maisa, or Maisa Shani, with hands that are Shani Latuma, they're mutter because they don't become a shlishi l'tumah because chulun doesn't become a shlishi l'tumah. The chachamim osim de maiser and chachamim osir be maiser, as Rashi explains, they're they're osir the maiser to be eaten when it's touched. It doesn't become a shlishi l'tumah, but they're osir the maiser to be eaten. But the chulun, if it's touched, so not only does it not become a shlishi l'tumah, it also can be eaten. But that's just in terms of eating. But even the chachamim seem to agree that a chulun cannot become a shlishi l'tumah. Now, just what does it mean? Metame es hakodesh uposel tumah. Doesn't mean metame and posel. Anybody? Good. So posel means it's done, but the buck stops here. Metame means it becomes tame, and it can be metame other things. So by definition, chulin we would say is posel at the sheni level, because now it becomes posel, but it can't be metame other things, and it can't be metame itself because it can't become a shlishi. So that's why it says over here metame es hakodesh that a rishon that a sheni letuma can be metame es hakodesh because not only can it make the kodesh Tame, the Kodesh can then be Metame other Kodesh because it can become a Ravi. But it's posel as a Chuma because once it makes Chuma into Shlishi, the Shlishi can no longer become a Ravi. Chuma cannot become a Ravi. Therefore, Chuma is considered to be posel at the Shlishi level, and Kodesh is considered to be posel at the Ravi level. And Chulin is considered to be posel at the Shani level. And over here, we see that Mutter Bechulin, that if a Shani touches Chulin, it's going to be Mutter because, again, Chulin cannot become a Shlishi Latoma. So we have our proof right there. Very easy. Rabbi Meir. That's Rabbi Meir. What about Rabbi Yossi? Rabbi Yossi Hadamah. Now, if you remember, I don't because I didn't do that daf, but I went to look it up. But Rabbi Yossi says that there is a whole Kalva Chomer that we learn. So he learns that you learn everything from a Kalva Chomer. Shani Shlishi Rabbi. So they say very simply, there's a problem. If you're going to tell me that a Chulin can become a Shlishi, then what does that mean? That means that Truma, which is the next level, can become a Rabbi. And that means that Kodesh can become a Chamishi, which is a no-no. So it's just a matter of, logistically, you can't push everything down one. And therefore, a Chulin, by definition, can only become a Shani. The other one can only become a shlishi. Truma and Kodesh can only become a revi, because if you made Chulin into a shlishi, then Truma would be a revi, and then Kodesh would be a chamishi. Rabbi Yossi Adam and Dimi 
Because if it was true that he felt that Chulin can become a Shlishi, then he should have said that it revi that a Truma becomes Revi and Kodesh becomes a Hamishi, which we know he doesn't hold. And therefore, Shalom Yisrael, and you see that he holds that Shani, Chulin can become a Shani, but not a Shlishi. Rabbi Yoshua, where do we see that Rabbi Yoshua holds that Chulin can only become a Shani, not a Shlishi? He did not. Rabbi Eliezer, Oimer HaOchel, Ochel, Rishon, Rishon, Shani, Shani, Shlishi, Shlishi. Says the Gemara, says Rashi on the right side, six lines down. Haochel on the six lines from where we are. Haochel ocha rishon, chatsi pras me ocha rishon, nase gufo rishon letoma midirabanan. If you eat something that's a rishon letoma, you become a rishon. If you eat something that's a sheni letoma, you become a sheni. If you eat something that's a shlishi letoma, you become a shlishi. Rabbi Yeshua Omer, haochel ocha rishon, that if you eat ocha rishon, you don't become a rishon letoma, you become a sheni letoma. Just like veochel sheni. So he says if you eat ocha rishon or sheni, you become a sheni. Shlishi, if you eat Ochel Shlishi, so then you would become, you think you become a Shlishi Latuma? No. Ochel Ochel Shlishi, Shani Bekodesh. You still become a Shani Latuma for Kodesh, which means that you can now be Mitame Kodesh. Vein Shani Betruma. But you can't become Mitame Truma. Now, that seemingly is not like we hold, because it sounds like he's saying that a Shani cannot even be Mitame Truma. But either way, for our purposes, Bechul and Shana Sual Taras Truma. But what do we see over here? We see that clearly, when you're a Shani, you cannot be, you can only be Metame Kodesh, you cannot be Metame Truma, you cannot even be Metame Chulin. So we see that Chulin does not become a Shlishi, even though your body is a Shani. Says the Gemara, Bechulin Shanasu al Taras Truma. So the Gemara tries to say, Bechulin Shanasu al Taras Truma, al Taras Shachuma in, al Taras HaKodesh lo. Alma Kasavra in Shani Osa Shishi Bechulin. I could go on and pretend that we understand it, but we're going to explain it. So let's go back for a second. Rabbi Yeshua Mer, Haochel Ochel. If you eat Ochel Sheni, you become a Sheni. Shlishi, if you eat Ochel Shlishi, so now what do you become? So let's see the Rashi. Shlishi, the second wide line in Rashi. Ochel Ochel Rishon, Ochel Shlishi, 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 Ochel so you make it Tame, because again, Kodesh can become a Shlishi, and it can also become a Revi, it can also be Mitame, something else. So what do we see here? Shani Bekodesh, Vain Shani Betruma. Again, seemingly Rabbi Yeshua holds that your body, which is a Shani, can actually make Kodesh into a Shlishi, but can't even make Truma into a Shlishi, which seems to be not like we hold. But then he says, Bechulin Shanasu al Taras Truma. What does that mean? Beezo Chulin Amrusha Ochel Shlishi Shelehen Nasa Shani Lakte. So let's forget about what the person can now do once he becomes a Shlishi. So he eats, right, he's eating Rishon, he becomes a Rishon. He eats Shani, he becomes a Shani. If he eats Shlishi, so now he becomes a Shani for Kodesh, he becomes maybe a Shani for Truma, but seemingly not. But forget about what he becomes for what. The fact that he becomes, the question is, what is he eating to become that? So he's eating a Rishon, it can be anything you want. Make it up. Truma, Kodesh, Chulin. Because everything, everybody agrees that those can all become Rishons. The question is, when we say that he eats a Shani, so the Shani can also be. It can be Chulin, Maiser, Shani, Kodesh, Truma, anything that's a Shani, Latuma. The question is, when it says Bishlishi, that he eats a Shlishi, and by eating a Shlishi, he becomes a Shani for Kodesh, what's that Shlishi that he's eating? So we might think that the Shlishi that he's eating is what? Is Kodesh, is Truma, is Chulin. What would that prove if the shlishi that he's eating is, is chulin? That chulin can become shlishi. So the Gemara says straight out, according to Rabbi Yoshua, the chulin that he's eating is not regular chulin, because if it was regular chulin, then it wouldn't be called a shlishi, because regular chulin can't be a shlishi. So what does it mean when it says he's eating shlishi? So one could have argued he's eating kodesh, he's eating chuma. Says the Gemara, no, he's eating, he's eating chulin, but a special type of chulin. Says Rashi. Which chulin is he eating that we're calling this chulin a shlishi? Not regular chulin, but chulin shenasu al taras It's a special type of chulin that was guarded over by who? By the kohanim. Shabale and kohen viragil betruma. A kohen eats truma. He has to be kodesh, and he has to be tar, and the truma has to be tar. So he guards over the truma. So he's careful about his truma, but he's also careful about his chulin. Vikibel of lecho chulin shelo betaras truma kadeshiyeh ragil lechumosa betaras kukalahen. So he goes ahead and he's very careful with his chulin. So for whatever reason, which we're not going to discuss, that chulin, the special chulin of the kohen, can become a shlishi. 
Latuma. Hilkach Meshkachas Bushlishi de Bechulin Acherin Lo Meshkachas Shlishi. The point is that what the Gemara is saying here is that this special chulin can become a shlishi, and therefore it says when you eat a shlishi, you become a sheni. But that's only chulin, that's a chulin of a kohen, which he's very careful to guard. But what does that imply? That implies Rabbi Yeshua holds that regular shlishi, that shlishi which is regular chulin, there is no such thing as shlishi which is regular chulin, because again, chulin can't become a shlishi. If chulin can't become a shlishi, we have our proof for Rabbi Yeshua, that Rabbi Yeshua holds that chulin cannot be a shlishi. Altaras HaChuma in, it's talking about chulin which has been guarded like chuma. Altaras HaKodesh Lo. So Rashi, interestingly, if you look over there, Hachi Garcinon, Altaris Chuma in, what does it mean, Altaris HaKodesh Lo? What should it say? Altaris Chuma in, Chulin Greedy Lo. Rashi changes the gears to there. Chulin Greedy Lo. Because we're not talking about Chuma and Kodesh, we're talking about Chuma versus anything else. We're talking about how do we treat this Chulin of the Kohen. Either you're talking about Taras Chuma in, we're talking about that we treat it like Chuma and therefore it could become a Shlishi because he's guarding it. But I'll regular Chulin greedy low. That's how you read the Gemara. Bechulin Shnaz Vataras Chuma. I'll Taras a Chuma in. I'll Chulin greedy low. Regular Chulin cannot become a Shlishi. That's not what he's talking about because it can't become a Shlishi. You see over here that he's definitely talking about this special type of Chulin. This special type of Chulin that could become a Shlishi. Regular Chulin cannot become a Shlishi. And therefore you see Rabbi Yeshua holds a regular Chulin can't become a Shlishi. Alma Kisavar ain't Shani Osa Shlishi Bechulin. You see clearly that he holds that chulin cannot become a shlishi unless it's a special type of chulin that the Kohen's guarding, then it can become a shlishi. Good? Rabbi Elazar. Again, we are, have a list in the top of the page of five people that hold that chulin cannot become a shlishi. So we already told you, Rabbi Meir, from B.S. Mayim, we already told you, Rabbi Yossi, we proved to them from the Kava Homer, and we just proved to you from Rabbi Yeshua that he holds chulin can become a shlishi. Where do we see that Rabbi Elazar holds that chulin cannot become a shlishi? Detanya, Rabbi Elazar, Omer, shlush dan shavin, all three are equal. What does that mean? That means chulin, chuma, and kodesh can all become a rishon. Everybody agrees that all those can become a rishon. Choose everybody agrees that all those can become a sheni. Ha rishon, by a Rishon, Shebe Kodesh, Shebe Chulin, Shebe Chuma. All of these can be a Rishon, obviously. Chulin, Kodesh, Chuma, everybody agrees. What do they do? Metame Shnaim. They're Metame two other things. What are they Metame? They're Metame Chulin and Chuma. Uposel Echad Bekodesh. And they can be Posel Echad Bekodesh. Now, again, we said that Metame means it can continue the line. Uposel Echad. So if you have Rishon Latumas, what could it do? It can make a Shani and a Shlishi, which can then, if it's the right thing, be Metame other things. Let's say it's Kodesh. If you make a Kodesh a Shani or you make a Kodesh a Shlishi, it could still be Metame other things. So it's Metame two things, Shani and Shlishis. But it's Posel one thing, it's Posel Raviz, because again, Ravi, the buck stops here. Metame Echad. Uposel echad bechuma. By truma, it can be metame truma once, because again, it can make a sheni, which can then be metame truma for a shlishi. But posel echad bechuma, but once it gets to the shlishi, the truma, the buck stops here. Uposel echad bechulin. But by chulin, a rishon letuma is posel. This is what we need. Rishon letuma is posel chulin. What does that mean by definition? If we say that a rishon letuma is posel chulin, what does that mean? The rishon is posel chulin. It makes the chulin tame, but it's not metame chulin. If we said that it was metame chulin, that means that the rishon makes the chulin tame, and then the chulin can go ahead and make something else, Tame, i.e. other chulin, which would mean that it could become a shlishi. The fact that we see clearly for our purposes, again, this is what we're concentrating on, the fact that we see the Rabbi Eliezer says that a rishon letumah, whatever it is, is posel chulin, it means a rishon letumah can be metame chulin, but it's not metame chulin, it's posel chulin. Once it touches chulin, the chulin becomes tame, I agree, but it's not metame chulin. Metame, the lashon of metame means that that chulin can now be metame something else, other chulin, i.e. make it a shlishi, that's not what it says. It's posel chulin, a rishon is posel chulin, the chulin becomes tame as a shani the tuma, but the buck stops here. And by definition, when we say posel, that means that that becomes uh, tame, but now it cannot be metame anything else. It can't be metame chulin. Other chulin to make it into shlishi. And we see clearly Rabbi Yeshua holds that chulin cannot become a shlishi. If you're just walking in now, you walked in at the worst part, because it's the hardest part. Rabbi Eliezer, you might want to walk out and come back in like three minutes. Rabbi Eliezer, <laughs> you can just pretend, or you can just close your eyes, whatever. If you're one of those. Rabbi Eliezer did not. Start over again. The question is, if you close your eyes during Dafyomi, is it considered as if you learned the whole thing? That's a question. Okay. Just being in the room, you, you, uh, you get it through osmosis. Okay. <laughs> Rabbi Eliezer did not. So Rabbi Eliezer holds as follows. This is the hardest one. Rabbi Lezer holds. Where do we see the Rabbi Lezer holds? Again, all the other four were very clear. Tum and Tara, we can take care of that. No problem. But Rabbi Lezer is the hardest one for Tum and Tara. So Rabbi Lezer says that, again, we're trying to prove that Rabbi Lezer holds that a chulin cannot become a shlishi letumah, only shen letumah. Listen to what he says. I'm going to say it outside for a second. You have two, um, you have two loaves of, un, uh, of, of unbaked bread. You have two challahs that your wife got. One of them, unfortunately, is tamay, one of them is tahar. You bought them in Sobeys, one of them, the package was opened, 
One of them was Tame, one of them was Tar. Fine. You have to separate challah from the thing, assuming you have to separate challah. If you make enough, let's just, I'm using the emblem of buying, but let's say you make your own challahs, and now you've got to separate challah. So you have two challahs you've got to separate challah from. The question is, can you separate challah from the tahor one for the tame one? For whatever reason, you don't want to separate challah from the tame one. You want to just separate t- from the tahor one for itself, and you also want to separate challah from the tahor one for the other ones. Right? This happens when you make actual challah, and you go in and you make different loaves. So people ask me sometimes, you're supposed to separate challah before you bake them. If you have to bake them, you still have to separate challah. So you separate from one loaf. You don't take off, of, if you make 20, uh, 20 challahs, you don't take off from each challah. But the question is here, you have two challahs. And yeah, you have a tummy one and a tar one. Can you separate from the tar one, not just for the tar one, can you separate from the tar one for the tummy one as well? So the Gemara is going to come up with a very interesting suggestion. What you need to do is, if you want to do that, you can't just separate from the tar one for the tummy one. You need to take a piece of the tar one, connect it to the tummy one, and then separate that piece from the tummy one. There's only one problem. You can't take the tar one and connect it to the tummy one because what's the status of that piece once you took it off the tar one? If when taking it off the tar one, before it actually became challah, it has the quasi name challah because it's soon going to become challah, then there's a certain, um, uh, there's, there's, there's a certain uh, kedusha to that. And when you touch it to the tummy dough, then that challah is going to become tummy. A regular piece of tahor dough that touches the tummy dough, no, no, what's the big deal? Okay, you made a tummy, but we eat tummy dough all the time. But if you're taking something that's going to have the shame challah, or even doesn't have the shame challah now, but you know that basically you're connecting it to the tummy dough to make it into the shame challah so you could take it off as challah, so now the question becomes, can you actually take that quasi tahor dough which is, again, not the fact that it's tar, the quasi chala dough, the, the dough that's, that you know is going to be pulled off as, as, as chala, that's going, to be ta, that's going to be kodesh, can you take that and connect it to the tamay dough and then go ahead because you're sort of like uh, being mechalel kodesh. So the Gemara's going to come up with a crazy suggestion. I don't want to say crazy, it's just hard to understand. It's going to come up that what do you do? You take a piece of tahor dough, as we'll see in a second, and you make a bridge between the tamay dough and the chala. So you're going to take two pieces off from the tar dough. And again, as the Gemara's going to explain, this is all before you took off chala from the tar dough. If you take off chala from the tar dough for itself, you blew it. So you don't take off chala from the tar dough. You have a tar dough and a tamay dough. You want to go ahead and take off from the tar dough for the tamay dough. So what do you do? You take off a little piece of just bread. Regular bread. You're not, you're not saying that it's challah. You take off a little piece of bread from the tar dough and you connect it to the end of the tamay dough. So now that bread becomes tamay, but, well, we'll see in a second if it becomes tamay. Seemingly it becomes tamay, but no, no. It's going to drop a level from whatever, let's say the bread is at Rishon. Now that little piece of bread will either be a shani or it won't be anything. That's the little piece you took off from the tar dough. Now you're going to take off another piece from the tar dough, which is going to be for the shame of challah. We know that that's going to be the challah piece. You're going to connect it to the bridge. Now it becomes part of the tamay dough without actually touching the tamay dough. And now you want to separate challah. Now you go ahead and you separate challah. You take that piece that you just connected and you take it off. And now you're separating challah for the tamay dough. But it's, in essence, separating from the tar dough for the tamay dough by connecting it. Again, why can't you just take the piece from the tar dough and connect it directly to the tamay dough right off the bat? Because then, then that piece which you're ultimately going to take off as challah, you're basically being mitame which might be a bizayon for something that's about to become Kodesh. We'll see in the Gemara. Right. But by taking a little bridge, now you took the Tahar dough, you made a little bridge. Now you have your Tame dough, a little bridge, which again, maybe that bridge will or will not become Tame. We'll see in a second. Now, you, because if it becomes Tame, then you didn't accomplish anything. But seemingly that bridge is not going to become Tame, or it's at least not going to become as Tame as the original piece of challah. Now think about for a second what we're talking about. If the challah is a Rishon, and that becomes Shani, if we treat this third piece now, this piece that you want to make into challah, so if it's chulin, then it can't become a shlishi. That's where we're going to go with this. I'm just giving it away because I don't know why. But anyway, so that's where we're going to go. So that's where. So so that that's just the picture in a nutshell of what we're doing. So Rabbi Eliezer did not. Rabbi Eliezer Omer, chala nitelas minat taharel atmei. You can take chala off of the tahor dough for the tamei dough, but you have to do it in a special way, the way that I just explained. Keitzad, how do you do this? Shte isos achas tahor va'achas tamei. Notel kedei chala me isa shelo horma chalasa. You take the chala. You take off a challah size, whatever that size is, let's just say a handful, from the tahor dough, and you hold it in your hand. And again, it's only shelo horma t'chalasa. It's only once you haven't taken off challah for the tahor dough for itself. Because again, the challah you're taking off now is going to be for the tamay dough. Vinosin pachos mi kabeitza b'amsa. What do you do? Now you take off another small piece, pachos mi kabeitza, less than an egg, because seemingly, again, it won't be able to become tamay, as we'll see. You take off a little piece, and you connect it to the tamay dough. Kide lito minamukov. Then you connect this piece of challah that you took off, which you wanted to act as the challah for the tamay dough, and now you connect it to the bridge. Fine. What does that accomplish? Says Ingmar, that's how you do it according to Rebbe Liezer. 
Says a Chachamim, Vechachamer Osen. Chachamim don't like this, and they don't let you connect it with this special thing, even if it's less than a Kibetza. Vitanya, we have another Brysa, and this is important, Bikibetza. We have another Brysa that says that according to Rabbi Eliezer, again, Chachamim don't let you make the bridge, even if the bridge is less than a Kibetza, which seemingly cannot be Mechabal Tuma. But the Rabbi Eliezer goes to the other extreme and says, even if the piece that you're using as a bridge is bigger than a Kibetza, which seemingly would be able to be Mechabal Tuma, even then you can go ahead and then take the Chala piece and connect it to the bridge. What do we see over here? Says the Gemara, Sivaruha, so seemingly we hold, Aide vi Aide be Isa Rishona. Says, says the Gemara, Sivaruha, Aide vi Aide be Isa Rishona, Vichulin hatvulin lechala lo kechala damu. So what are we talking about over here? The question is that, again, the Bryce and the Mishnah are both dealing with a tame dough that is a rishon latuma. So again, you have tower dough that's a rishon, and you have tame dough that's a rishon. When the brisa says that you can connect even a kabetza size of tahor dough to the tame dough, so seemingly what happens? That connecting the bridge becomes a sheni latuma. Now you can go ahead and you can take your chala piece from the tum, from the tahor dough and connect it to the bridge. Now why is that okay? If the mise in the middle is a kabetza, then it becomes a sheni. Why is it okay? Seemingly, it's only okay according to Rabbi because what? Because the chal is being treated like what? The chal is being treated like chulin. If the chal is being treated like chulin, it can't be makabel as a shlishi, and therefore you did everything you needed to do. So you have the tame chala, you have the kabetza, even the kabetza size, because again, less than a kabetza is not a chiddush. It's not makabel tuma. Therefore, you could definitely use less than a kabetza. We'll have to see why the chamer osin. Okay, I'll give it away now. Chamer osin because of gezera. Chamer osin really the chamer agree less than a kabetza. No problem. You do less than a kabetz and then you connect the challah. But it's not. A, it's a problem because we're worried that a kabetz is going to be a problem. We'll have to see why, according to Chum, a kabetz is going to be a problem. But according to Rabbi Lezer, which I understand now, you have the tamedo, which is a rishon. You have the bridge, which is a kabetz, which is a sheni. Now you can go ahead and take another piece of the tahor dough, which will be used ultimately to be separated as challah from the tamedo, and you can connect it to the bridge because now that would become a shlishi. But chulin doesn't become a shlishi. You have a proof from here that Rabbi Lezer holds that chulin doesn't become a shlishi. That's what the Gemara says. Let me just finish. This thing, and then I'll take all the questions. V'chulin hadvulin l'chala lo kechala damu. And he clearly holds that chulin, which is going to become chala, is not treated like chala. Because again, if it was going to become chala, and we treat it like chala, then we would treat it with more holiness. We would treat it like a truma, for instance. And then even if it's connected to the sheni, it would become tame, because truma can become a shlishi latuma. Says the Gemara, my la b'hakamifli. And again, I explain why the Chachamim are osrin. So that's the proof for Rabbi Eliezer that he lets you take even when the bridge is a kabetza, which becomes a sheni. He lets you take chala, which is now quote unquote chulin, connected to that, and it doesn't become tummy because chulin cannot become a shlishi, and that's because chulin hatvulin the chala is lo kechala nama. We don't treat it as regular chala. We treat it as chulin, even though it's going to ultimately be chala. We treat it as chulin, and therefore it doesn't be mikabel tuma. My la b'hakamifli. Is this not what they're arguing about? Demar savar ain sheni osa shlishi. Is this not the argument that we're thinking about? Again, we already have our proof. But the point is that now we're trying to understand. Is it not true that the reason that the Chachamim say you can't do this is because they hold that the Chulin can actually become a Shlishi Latuma? And therefore the Chachamim hold it could be a Shlishi Latuma. You can't do it, even if it's less than a Kabetza because of Xerah, but if it's a Kabetza, you can't do it because of Maisa, Rishon, Bridge is a Shani, Chulin, which is going to be Chala, is going to be a Shlishi, and Shlishi can be Makabal Tuma. Therefore you can't do it. Amr of Mary, Brader of Kana Chidish. De Kuli Ama ain't Shani Osa Shlishi Bechulin. No. Where Bunnan agree that a sh- that chulin cannot become a shlishi. Again, we already have our proof for Rabbi, for Rabbi um, Eliezer. But even the Rabbanan agree that it can't become a shlishi. If chulin can't become a shlishi, so why do the Rabbanan hold that you can't do this? Why can't you do it? Even if it's a kabetza size, why can't you do it? Be shown shady. Chulin now connect. It shouldn't be able to become a shlishi. No. The reason is that the Rabbanan hold that we don't treat it as regular chulin. We treat chala, which is going to be chala, as truma. We treat it with a higher sense of kedusha, and therefore they hold that you're right. Regular chulin cannot become a shlishi. The Rabbanan agree. But again, over here in this case, they say that chulin, which is going to become chala, has a certain degree of kedusha, and therefore it can become a shlishi here. And Rabbi Lezer says no. Even if chala is going to become, even if the even if the chulin is going to become chala, we still treat it as regular chulin, and therefore it cannot become shlishi. But again, they both agree that chulin can't become a shlishi. It's just how we treat this piece of dough. Do we treat it like chulin? Do we not treat it like chulin? Rabbi Lezer says we treat it like regular chulin. The Rabbanon say we treat it like chala. We treat it like truma. And therefore, when you connect it, you can't connect it because the mice is going to be a problem. But again, we see that everybody holds that chulin cannot become a shlishi. 
Shlishi. Ve'ibai same. You want to go even further. Dekule amachul and atul and lechal alokechal adamu. Ve'ain sheni yotz shlishi bechul. You can say that no, the Rabbanan hold that a chulin can't become a shlishi, and they even hold that this chala over here that you're taking off, which is chulin, we don't treat as chala. So why do the Rabbanan hold that you can't go ahead and do this if it's a kavetz? why can't the Rabbanan take from the Torah one and put it in? Says the Rabbanan v'hacha b'motzar ligrom tumah lechulin sheba eretz yisrael kamifli. It's not a din in that third piece. It's not a piece in the piece that's connecting to the bridge. It's a question with the bridge itself. You can't make the bridge itself tame because we're dealing in Eretz Yisrael, and you can't make something tame in Eretz Yisrael. Because again, what are you doing? You're taking the little piece to make a bridge. The bridge is becoming tame. The bridge is becoming a sheni. Everybody agrees that the bridge is becoming a sheni. The Rabbanan say you can't make something in Eretz Yisrael. You can't make it tame. Therefore, you can't use this because by taking the Torah dough to use it as a bridge, you're making the bridge a sheni. That's a problem. Umar savar asu ligrom tuma lechun shiretal. The Rabbanan say it's asu ligrom tuma. Therefore, you can't make the bridge. And Rabbi Lezer is not bothered with making tuma in Eretz Yisrael. Therefore, he says take the piece to make a bridge. That becomes a sheni. Take the next piece as chala, which you attach to it, which now becomes a shlishi, but it can't become a shlishi because it's chulin and it's not treated like chala. And therefore, shalom al Yisrael. Okay, not so hard when somebody else explains it. Okay. Mm-hmm. The, the, uh, if it's less than a zayis, it's still... It's less than a kabetza. Uh-huh. So we were saying, less than a kabetza so would not be makabal tuma, but at the end of the day, the chamim still goes there less than a kabetza because you might come to kabetza. they're concerned about something that's so small. That's no, I think it's, it's a din just that's not makabal tuma. Right. Yeah. Okay, but again, we have five proofs so that chulin. So if you walk away not understanding anything, at least understand that chulin, according to all five of these people, chulin cannot become a shlishi latuma. Okay, now it's the easy part. Bo bayom daresh Rabbi Akiva. So Rabbi Akiva says, what are we talking about over here? So if you remember that the Mishnah said that Rabbi Akiva holds, everybody agrees that Levium get a thousand amos outside of the city. So they get a thousand amos. And then the question is, is another two thousand amos? The Torah says that they get a payim ba'amah. It's like that weird, I forgot what it's called, that weird note in the Torah where it's got the, what is it? Yeah, you want to please, uh, you want to, you want to do, how, how, how do we do it? Somebody asked me, see, fake it off. Fake it off, okay. Please, we'll hire you as my... Remind me that when, when my son's a bar mitzvah, I shouldn't hire you. Okay. Just fake it off, no problem. Tell the truth. No one else knows. You tell the truth. Nobody else tells the truth. Okay. Nobody knows on the tape what we're talking about. So what are they arguing about? So you have the thousand amos, then you have the extra two thousand amos. So the extra two thousand amos is a machlokas. Rabbi Akiva says that the extra two thousand amos for the Levim, what does that mean? That's the two thousand amos for Tchum Shabbos. And then the other opinion, Rabbi Eliezer holds, no, the extra two thousand amos is not for Tchum Shabbos. Shabbos. The 2,000 Amos is actually for the Levium's plants and uh, fields and vineyards. If I was a Levi, I would obviously agree with Rabbi Eliezer. It gives me 2,000 extra Amos for my fields and my vineyards, not just a Tchum Shabbos. What are they arguing about? Says the Gemara, Rabbi Mar Savar Tchum and Deoraisa. Rabbi Kiva holds that Tchum and Deoraisa. The din of Tchum and Deoraisa, therefore what? The Torah tells us the 2,000 Amos to teach us that you have 2,000 Amos for Shabbos. Well, according to the other opinion, Mar Savar Deoraisa. The other opinion, Rabbi Eliezer holds that Tchum and Deoraisa. If Tchum and Deoraisa, then the 2,000 Amos in the Torah ain't talking about Tchumen because it didn't come till the rabbis made it up. If that's not talking about Tchum Shabbos, the 2,000 Amos, then what's the 2,000 Amos talking about? It's talking about 2,000 Amos that the Levim get for their fields and their vineyards. Tanu Rabbanan. Bo bayom darash Rabbi Akiva. Bishah she'olu Yisrael min hayam. When the Bnei Israel came from the Yam, they went to say Shira. How did they say Shira? This is the famous Gemara. How did they say Shira? Like a Gadol. Well, when a Gadol says something, let's just use Kiddush as an example, everybody can be motzi by answering Amen. When a Gadol says something, you can be motzi with them, you just answer something to their bracha or to their phrase. So it was like a Gadol who would read Halel, and they would read after Rashi Prakim, right? The Rashi gives an example that nowadays would be the equivalent of Hallel, everybody saying, right, the Rechazim reading Hallelujah, and everybody, end, and, and everybody at the end of each paragraph yelling out Hallelujah. So over here, that's what they did at the Yam also. That, the, that Moshe Omar Ashir al Hashem, what's this Pasuk? We say it every day. Az Yashir Moshe Avnei Yisrael Hashira Azos Hashem Vayomrule more. What did they say? Ashir al Hashem, Kiga Oga, Susvarach Oramayam. So what would happen? Moshe would say Ashir al Hashem, Vehemorim Ashir al Hashem. Moshe would continue, Moshe Omar Kiga Oga, Baruch was exalted, and what did they answer? They always answered the same thing: Hallelujah, Ashir el Hashem. V'hein Omri Ashir el Hashem. He would say Sus v'Rachor Amavayam, and what did they answer? Ashir el Hashem. That was the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Lezer ben Rabbi Yosef ben Galilio, Mayor. No, that's not how they did it. They did it like a katan hamakrit halo. How does a katan read halo? Well, when a katan reads halo, what does he do? He says something, and then you can't just say Ashir el Hashem. You can't just say Amen. You can't just say Hallelujah. What do you have to do? It's a katan. He can't be mode, so You need to repeat after him. 
He says something and you repeat after him. So they agree on that part. So Rabbi Akiva says that they'll scream out, No, he can't be Motsi them. They have to repeat. Moshe says, and the people call out. So they basically repeat word for word. Rabbi Nechem Yomer, no. No, they didn't even do that. They did like a chazan in the base Knesset. What does he do? It's like you ever dive in with the Svardim. What do they do? So the Svardim, the guy starts a paragraph and then they say everything together. It's not that the chazan says something and then they repeat it. It's that the chazan says it, he just starts a paragraph and then they say everything together. As Rashi says. So those are the three opinions. That they said everything together. That basically Moshe and Rabbeinu said Ashira and as soon as he said Ashira, everybody started saying Ashira Lashem and then they daven like the Sephardim where they say every word out loud which I really like. Thinking about converting one day. We'll have to talk about it. Then Rabbi Eliezer holds that, you, that they would answer word for word whatever Moshe said and Rabbi Akiva says that they would always answer the same thing Ashira Lashem. So what are they arguing about? Well, it's based on the Pesukim. Because what does the Pasuk say? It seems to be extra words. This is what they saying. What did they say? They said lay more, saying. What does it mean they said saying? They said saying, somebody said and somebody else said. So what does it mean by Yemru Lemor? What's Lemor? Rabbi Kiva Savar Lemor. What does Lemor mean? Amil So Kamaisa. Lemor, the people said Ashira La Hashem for everything. He would call out Ashira La Hashem. They would say Ashira La Hashem. He would say Kiga Oga. They would say Ashira La Hashem. Rabbi Eliezer Ben Oshar Yosef Glili, who says that they didn't say Ashira La Hashem every time. They repeated what Moshe said every time. Savar Lemor. A Komil So Mils. When it says Lemor, it's not just going on Ashira La Hashem. It's going on Ashira La Hashem. It's going on Kiga Oga. It's going on Susvarach Ruach Mavayam. That they repeated word for word, or every two three words they repeated from Moshe Rabbeinu. For Nechemya who says that what? That they didn't repeat anything, they just said it all biyachad. Savar, he concentrates on the Vayomru. Vayomru de Amru Kulu Bahade Adade. Laymore, what does it mean Laymor? De Pasach Moshe Beresha. Resha that Moshe started, but Lamaisa they all said it together. Those are the three opinions on what happened at the Shira. How did they know what to say? Seemingly they knew. Huh? Interesting. That's, 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 that's the three levels. It depends on what intensity oh, Rashi says four lines down thank you mm-hmm. we have uh, Tamid Echam in the Shir with us okay Tani Rabbanan Darash Rabbi Yossi Aglili Rabbi Yossi Aglili says B'shosh Ol Yisrael this is a famous Gemara B'shosh Ol Yisrael min ayam non nu enayam lo mar shira v'kei tzad amar shira how do they say shira olal mutal abir ke'imo even an infant that was resting on their mother's knees, Vitino Gioneg Mishteimo, even a baby that was breastfeeding. Kevan Sharos Hashkina, when they heard the Shkina, when they saw the Shkina, Ola Libia Savaro, the infant popped up, Vitino Kshamat. Dad mi piv, he, he, stopped, uh, he stopped feeding. For Amru, even the kid said, Zek keli v'anveyu. Where do we see this? Because it says in Tehillim, Shanamar mi pi olalim v'yonkin isadita oz. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu's might was established even from the mouths of olalim v'yonkin. That's what Rabbi Yosek Lili says. And now you may have heard this also. Hari Rabbi Meir Omer, mi nayin shafilu ubrim shebebe iman omer shira. How do you know that even the fetuses in their mother's womb said shira? Shanamar, because it says in the Pasuk, Bimakelos, as it says in Yeshaya, Bimakelos, Baruch Hu Elokim Hashem, Mimikor Yisrael. That with the assembly, what's the assembly, says Rashi, Kishanikalu al Yam, when they assembled on the Yam, Baruch Hu Elokim Hashem, everyone blessed Elokim Hashem, Mimikor Yisrael. Even from the Makor, even from the womb, even the ones that were in the Ubrim, Shabimai Iman, they also blessed HaKadosh Baruch Hu.